Hey there friends, it's Simone. Today I am swatching some samples, 10 in total, of inks that I brought home from two meetups with friends. The same set of friends met up twice and um, we brought ink bottles and sample vials and so we were able to dip our syringes into other people's bottles and fill our sample vials. We, it was so fun, fun because we brought syringes and then somebody else brought a cup and then we got water from the bathroom so we were able to rinse the syringes and all that. So yeah, that's how that went. Um, I have, I think I said it, I'm swatching eight inks. Um, the way that I'm swatching my ink samples or any ink that comes into my house is by swatching them on Tomoe River paper, which is the notebook. And then I'm also swatching them on mixed media paper. At the time that I was doing my swatches, I was still doing them vertically on a card that was vertical. And now I changed it around and I'm going to, in the future, will do my swatches horizontally. Um, at that time, I was still using coloring cards, but I am now, I transitioned now over to making my own uh, from mixed media paper. Um, the Tomoe River Paper notebook that I'm using is a personal size insert that I received or purchased from Penguin Paper Penguin Co. It is 52 GSM. I am making swatches with um, a cotton swab and then I am using the uh, Kakimori brass nib on a Tachikawa acrylic um, nib holder and um, that's all the material that I'm using. The ink, the first ink that I swatched is Robert Oster Coffee Crema. It's a an ochre that is leaning towards orange. Um, yeah, so last time when I swatched, when I filmed a voiceover, recorded a voiceover for a swatch um, video, the first time around I swatched, I recorded the voiceover it was super scrambly because I was trying to talk about other things besides the swatching because there was so much time and I didn't really know what to say about the inks and so I said all the inks before and then moved over to the um, random stuff that I was talking about but then that meant that you would have to either look at what I was doing so you would see or take notes. I don't know. That wasn't really ideal. But the previous recording that I did for the voiceover was so all over the place because I always had to stop and say what ink I was swatching. Like right now, this is another Robert Oster ink. It is African Gold. And I have heard so many people love this ink. I would really, really want to like to try this in a pen. I'm a bit afraid to be honest because I haven't had much luck with lighter inks in my pens in the recent months. So yeah. Um, I, when we get to the com ink comparison video part of this, um, I am really curious to try some of the ones that I found as dupes or similar colors to the ones that I have here because some of these inks that I am swatching in this video I have already used in fountain pens and so I'm like mm, I do have similar inks in my stash already I don't have to go and buy any let me try those first so next ink that I'm swatching is Sailor Manu Fiji this ink is a chromo shading ink and in my swatch, it leans magenta, but the outer edges of the uh, swatch are teal, dark blue leaning. 
that is an ink that I haven't had in a pen yet. And I'm flipping through because it reminds me very much of Sailor Manio Neko Yanagi as well as Sailor Ink Studio 123, I think. And I'm just verifying that I'm thinking correctly, but I'm flipping through so, so many pages. And right now, a child is home, so I have to stop and continue later. While I was looking for where I stopped and re-listened, I realized that you're, what you're seeing on the swatch right now is very purple. Um, when it's dry, it looks magenta and not like this color that you see on the screen right now. Let's see if when we look at this after everything is dry, if it still looks the same way as it does now. The next one is another Manio ink, one of the newer ones. I think they came out in 2022, maybe. Are these the only two new Sailor Manio inks that came out? I am not sure. I am not keeping track of new inks as other people do. I just, whatever comes into my house, I swatch. Uh, sometimes I, I write down notes of inks um, when I see them on other people's videos. And uh, then I either ask friends if they have this ink in bottle form and would provide me a sample with, or I purchase it from a store. Um, um, so this one is Sailor Manu Hinoki. Um, and that's how these samples come into my house. But I'm definitely not someone who keeps track of every new ink that is released and how many inks are in one specific line or anything like that. That's absolutely not me. I don't need the ne newest, next best thing. Well, sometimes I do, but it's not something that needs to it, it doesn't have to be new for me in order for me to enjoy it. I, If this ink is years old and it's still available and I'm drawn to it, then I'm, I'm as likely to get it as one that is super new. Um, I'm swatching Pilot Iroshizuku Momiji right now. I had that in ink in a pen in March. And I was extremely surprised. It's not an ink that I would put into a very broad nib because it is very bold, very red, pink leaning. Um, but I had it in a fine nib and it worked really well. And again, it surprised me. It surprised me that I liked it so much because I usually don't gravitate towards these kinds of reds. It has a gold sheen that is visible on huge no actually it's also visible in the writing even in a fine nib so it does have a gold sheen but it's not overpowering the ink color um i used to enjoy i'm, I'm enjoying any kind of ink sample um it doesn't have to be new it doesn't have to be flashy just if i'm drawn to an ink then i i'd like to swatch it and maybe even use it in a fountain pen um, and what I was going to say about that is that I didn't really want to get any more uh, ink samples in 2023. That's a goal that I had in the beginning of the year. Didn't want to buy them. Currently, I'm not opposed to buying more, but I just in the month of March received quite a few that I still need to sample or want to sample. Need sounds like I have to do this. This is something that I want to do. Um, but getting getting even more is a bit daunting. And so I am I have a list of inks that I would like to try and test and swatch and maybe put in a pen. And once I am through all of the ones that I have right now, and once I started my ink project which is comparing very similar inks and I'm I'm I've gone through some of the samples that I have right now and I'm able to de-stash them I'm holding on to them until I'm done with that specific project or I swatched that specific ink for that project then I'm able to get rid of them and reduce my <laughs> ink sample load this is Birmingham Penco Cerulean. My friend Amy made me <laughs> ink 
a Twisby with that and also had me take some of that home. Birmingham Penko's ink bottles are huge. I think they're 60 milliliters or even more. Definitely a lot to get through. And so she was really happy to get to get some <laughs> of that to me. Um, and this next ink is one that I have seen on two channels. I think Handmade by Lorelei was the first one and then uh, Le Leanne from Leanne Likes. This is um, Taranishi Guitar Nostalgic Honey and I really liked that ink when I saw it swatched. So I was really excited that one of my friends had a bottle of that ink and I was able to get a sample of that and I'm I'm this is one of those colors that I'm so drawn to. I could accumulate more and more of the same color from different companies. And that's what I'm going to do in my comparison uh, swatch book, where I want to have chromatographies of inks that are very, very similar and swatches just to see how similar they are or different they are. Last one on this page is Ferris Wheel Press Bluegrass Velvet. That is a, is that a shimmer ink? I don't even know. Let me check and look at my swatch. No, it isn't. It looks like the little brother of one of the inks that I had in a um, ink flight box. And that was um, Edward's Garden, maybe. That is a shimmer ink, shimmer and sheening ink. And I... I'm, again, this is a color that I'm very drawn to, so of course I needed to take a sample to compare it to all the other colors that I have in my stash right now. Um, so now I'm back at the bit where I don't remember what I said before and what I didn't. So I'm not sure I'm going back to the ink flights once I'm settled in. I have skipped them until the month of August. Maybe I'll get the August box and then decide. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's... I have so many inks that I want to use and then I have so many inks on my list that I would love to, um, to get a hold of and then getting seven samples, especially two milliliter samples, which I just... Recently, I had this super huge mishap with one where I wasn't really able to use the whole sample because it was my fault. But still, it, especially with a color that I'm not 100% sure what pen I want to use it in, when it then doesn't really work in one pen, there's not a lot of ink left to try it in other pens. So that's what I'm why I'm a bit hesitant to go back. And then there is amazing stationary stuff in there, in those boxes, but I haven't, if I'm being honest, I haven't really made a lot of use of the items that were included. And so then it becomes a question, is it really, really worth me spending that money? Or should I keep that money and invest it in something else? I really love the concept and I would love to keep um, continue supporting Tom of Ink Journal. Um, but yeah. That's where my thoughts are for that. There's one last thing I want to mention, but before I do that, I want to say what color ink this is. This is, I have just realized that this is actually an Atlas Stationers exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. It is Wearing Ghoul 12th Night. That's one of the colors that I'm usually hesitant to use, but I really loved the light blue shimmer on that pink ink. I would love to use that in a pen. If you have suggestions what pen I should use, maybe the Bennu with a broad nib, so that I'm not disappointed, let me know. Um, and then the last ink that I'm swatching, I am writing it down as Wearing Ghoul Cowardly Lion 10 Drops and uh, Wearing Ghoul Heart 1. That is not true. It is Diamine Amazing Amethyst with the Shimmer Supplement from Wearing Ghoul. Um, just putting it out here. I wanted to touch on one more thing, which is I watched uh, Lefty Karen's reply to the eight pen questions. And she said something in that video that resonated so much with me because I feel like I am not that person. I am 
someone in theory I know that my hobby comes from my heart. She said, fountain pens and inks are her hobby, and they are coming from her heart. And she does not want to, or is opposed. She doesn't see the sense of being very rational about a hobby when it's supposed to bring you joy. And I feel like I need to adapt some of that thinking to be to not make everything so rational, so thought through, so maybe even anxiety ridden at some point because I'm overthinking this thing that is supposed to bring me joy. I really need to take some of that to my heart and um, enjoy it more than anything else. Now let's get to the comparisons. I found lots of colors. As I said, I picked inks that I'm already drawn to. So I have here, um, I have Urban Verdigris, I have Robert Oster, Soft Kitty, Warm Kitty, I have Pannonia Danuvius as a comparable color. And you might think, why is she bringing out those colors? They don't look the same. Troublemaker Abalone, Anderulium, hmm, Bunting Blue, something Bunting Blue, uh, Sailor Manu Neko Yanagi. It's not as close as I thought it was. And then Sailor Ink Studio 123. Yes, correct. I have found that... The ink swatches might look very different, but if you look at the writing in those cards, they sometimes look so close that I'm still bringing out those cards because I'm looking at the writing. Just to remember and remind myself that sometimes these really intense and very, the, the colors in the swatches are misleading to what the ink actually looks like in writing. And even I'm using a brass dip pen, so there's a lot of ink on that pen anyway. Um, so it might even look more similar or lighter in an actual fountain pen. And now look at those. These are the colors that I want to put into my color comparison. I have Diamine Brandy Snap that I have currently inked, or I'm going to currently ink in April, and it is an amazing color. Um, I want to see what these look like in the chromatography because in the swatch they look very different. Like Robert Oster a Coffee Crema is very green leaning here and it is true it's not just on this image. They're very very different, very same, and I'm looking for the one that I like best, and I might have actually found it already in Brandy Snap, which I thought I th found it in the Nostalgic Honey, but I'm not 100% sure that's true. Then I'm pulling out Birmingham Panko Cerulean and the Bluegrass Velvet. They're they're similar enough in their color range. Uh, Robert Oster, Fry and Ice. I brought out um, Ferris Wheel Press, Edwards Garden, because I feel like this ink is the exact same color, just with shimmer. Um, yeah, so, and Diamond Yuletide is also a very close match. I think it's a little bit more blue than the Bluegrass Velvet. Um, that's an ink that I want to put in a pen soon as well because of these um, swatch comparisons, actually. Um, I want to see what they look like. And then Octopus Fluids Aubergine is very, it's actually not very similar to the one, to this purple shimmer ink that I had in a pen in March and I loved it. Um, I have been thinking of getting a, a, a plain sample of um, Amazing Amethyst, but then I brought, I just brought out the Festive Joy. Well, actually, now that I look at it, it's not as similar. I mean, the Festive Joy is more similar to the Aubergine than to the um, Shimmer Ink Mix here. Maybe I should get a, a sample of Amazing Amethyst, but the one ink that I would love to get in a pen of those all is the Aubergine. I love that ink and I I said that when I swatched it and I still haven't put it in in a in a pen <sighs> but I already have my colors um, for May so and I already 
already inked all the pens for April, so that has to wait for a little bit, I guess. And then even though I said I don't really like red inks, <laughs> I have a lot of swatch cards for those. I think I passed on many red inks already because it's just not something that I'm very drawn to. I I might be convinced to use them sometimes in a fine nib, as I experienced in March, which I wasn't opposed to using. I was actually really excited to using that one. Um, but all the other colors that I'm showing here are very, very similar, yet a tiny bit different. The one that looked the closest was um, wild strawberry and there you can see the sailor manu fuji dried up to have this magenta in the center and here is a look at the nostalgic honey that's one i want to use soon uh, but i so i i'm going to show share an a swatch video with my friend casey who actually sent me 10 inks oh my gosh so many <laughs> I was excited but also a little bit overwhelmed and I want to use all of them or most of them in May. So then I guess all the other pens have to wait until July. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon. If you want to support me, please check out the link to Atlas Stationers in the description box or you can donate and buy me a coffee. All of those links are in the description box and I will see you soon. Until then, bye!